Boy, do I love the headlines in this paper today. It says, Captain E catches a 60-pound Kobe in Beaufort. We hope that happens today. We're joining Captain Jay Bache, a fishful thinking God service here in Beaufort. I'm going to sit back and enjoy this coffee here at the City Java News. You stay tuned and join us for some exciting adventures. Good morning, guys. We're down here at the Broad River. I'm with Captain English today. <laughs> Just trying to put our lines in the water. I literally set this in the water. We got about oh. a... Oh, what do we got here? About got 28 inch cobia. We're here cobia fishing in the Broad River. <laughs> oh, there he goes. First line in the water. We haven't been here 30 seconds, guys. Now, I've been here for a couple days. It's not going to be like this all day, but we're happy to take like this right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Way to go, yeah. Captain Jay. <laughs> that's awesome. Just sitting there catching bait, and you're over here catching fish. Ah, oh, here he comes, English. He's barely hooked, so if you can get him. Come on. Come on. Oh, he's running again. It's good. I think it's gonna be one of those days. I hope so, buddy. I tell you what, English, I've been coming down here for years, and I have never caught one this quick <laughs> <laughs> we don't even have our microphones on so sorry if the audio is a little rough guys <laughs> that's great here he comes oh god come back here boy. Come on. I'll tell you what, the water's cleaner than it was last year. Yeah, the water's we pretty. Were... I don't want to put more. He doesn't like the net job there, he buddy. He not. <laughs> he does not want to get netted. We're slow playing him a little bit. We got a... Oh, boy. Good job, E. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, on the fifth try, good job. Yeah. <laughs> All righty, uh, guys. Look at this. Perfect. In the, in the mouth. Right in the corner of his mouth. Let me get this out of him. Boy, I like it when it happens quick. I just wish we'd have had our microphones on. <laughs> <laughs> All righty, guys. Got the hooks back. We're not even going to measure this guy. He's probably about 28 inches. They got to be 33. Uh, he's going back in the drink. Thanks that for was playing, buddy. Thank you, sir. Yeah, that was fun, buddy. Hey, now let's get our mics on. <laughs> let's do it again. <laughs> Guys, we'll be back with some more fish. <laughs> Reeling Up the Coast is brought to you in part by Coastal Gas and in Merle's Inlet. Free ice with purchase of 50 gallons of fuel located behind the Chamber of Commerce. And by t to c Fishing Charters, specializing in offshore and inshore private charters. For more info, call 843-655-5459. By Fishizzle Tackle. Reels are gonna sizzle when you go Fishizzle. Visit FishizzleTackle.com for your nearest dealer. Carolina, USA. 
At Marshall's Marine, fun comes in waves and adventure is always waiting. Step inside the Southeast's largest climate controlled showrooms and select your next boat, Wave Runner or ATV. Choose from pontoon boats, deck boats, Triton and Ranger bass boats, Yamaha Wave Runners, Stingray Power Boats, and Arctic Cat All Terrain Vehicles. Marshall's is the largest marine dealer in the Carolinas and our service experience is second to none. We're just a short drive from where you are now. Family, fun, and fishing begins at Marshall's Marine, Lake City. Put a refreshing spin on your summer. Bud Light Lime. Superior drinkability. Ultimate refreshment. A splash of 100% natural lime flavor. One taste and you'll find the summer state of mind. Bud Light Lime. Before hundreds of pre-owns go to auction, Sparks Toyota is having a pre-auction clearance. Get up to 50% off pre-owns in our clearance zone. Our pre-owned vehicles are clearly marked with wholesale prices. Buy pre-owns with up to 50% off in the clearance zone. Great selection to choose. Get them now before they go to auction. Plus, log on at SparksToyota.com for a listing of vehicles under 10 grand. Pre-owned vehicles under 10 grand at SparksToyota.com. That's Sparks Toyota, where the dealer is always in. We just got hooked up again here, guys. How about that? All right, we're going to try to keep him on this side of the boat. He looks small. I think he's small. Yeah, he's small. But I tell you what, you can tell by the sun, we haven't been here long now. This is number two. Jay, what's this area called that we're in? This is called the turtle. There's a bunch of rips out here. The bridge rip, the turtle rip, the PI rip. Oh, we got big Oh, spinach. nice spinach. Oh yeah, good eating. Nice Woo, Spanish, sorry, buddy. sorry. Look at that. That's a nice Spanish mackerel. Right oh there. yeah, self-released. Yeah, we're gonna keep that one and put them in the box. Uh, we're not gonna lie, we're here to catch a little bit of dinner today. <laughs> uh, so if you see a couple don't go back in the water, that's why. Oh man. That's a good eating fish right there, Spanish mackerel. Look at fishy. Yeah man, good job. Hey. All right, let's put that one on ice. Yeah, get these good. hooks out of here. Let's see what we got. I think it doesn't look like that 50 pounder you're dreaming about. No. <laughs> but we're happy to have something on the line nonetheless, That's right. buddy. Well, I'll tell you what, your nieces are having a blast next door. Oh, yeah. Catching bait right now. Here we go. He's coming in. All right, let me get in here behind you, buddy. Let's see. It might be another Spanish. He hit it. Yeah, it's another Spanish. Another big Spanish. We'll definitely take that. Yep. That's just crazy. All the way. What are we, 12 miles from the ocean? Yeah, we're a good ways from the from the ocean, and uh, these Spanish will run in here. A lot of times when I'm cobia fishing, they'll be jumping all around eating greenbacks. We got mono leaders, so every time you can get one in, it's a bonus. These, yep. are, these are a teethy critter right here. Delicious, too. Right. Come on. Good table fare. Not yeah. quite like cobia. Not but. quite like a cobia, but he'll eat. There we go. There we go. Another nice Spanish Another mackerel. Another fish. Pretty fish. And uh, a lot of you guys want to know out there how to tell the difference between a Spanish and a king mackerel. Baby king mackerel have spots just like a Spanish. If you can see the lateral line on this fish, how it keeps a pretty straight line all the way through, young king mackerel have a big kink in the lateral line, and it's easy to remember. K for king, K for kink. And if it's got a kink in the lateral line, you have a king mackerel. So you really need to pay attention when you're catching these Spanish that you don't have a young king. Because if you get into the uh, dock and the game warden's sitting there, he's going to know the difference. <laughs> so you better know the difference too. That's right. And uh, we're going to throw this guy on ice as well. We're uh, excited to have him. We'll put lemon pepper Spanish mackerel for dinner tonight. All right. That's awesome. All right, Jay, um, you know, these are the same rigs we used last year when we were here, but I know we didn't go into detail as far as tying them. Why don't you show everybody how you tie these rigs? No problem, Inglis. Uh, we're, like I said, this is my cobia rig, and I also use this rig for live bait trolling for dolphin offshore. 80-pound um, mono. You want to get about six or seven feet of it. You're, you always want to have as much leader as the length of the fish you're trying to catch. So that way if the fish is facing away from you and you're pulling on him and his tail is hitting the line, He's hitting your leader instead of your main line. So let me show you what we're doing here. This is a number two, four strong treble hook. And you see on the treble hook, 
there's a flat side and a raised side. What you want to do is you want to come in through the eye, lay the line on the flat side of the hook, and just spin down the shaft of the hook seven or eight times. Get to the end of your line and go back through the eye. And that snells it right on the right on the leader, like that. And then you would go to the end of your line, take your second hook. Once again, flat side of the hook, raised side of the hook, lay the line on the flat side of the hook, go through the eye, pull it up. Now I like to set these hooks about five or five, six inches apart because one's going to go in the nose of the bait and one's going to go in the back of the bait. So our green backs are about eight inches long. So I set it about there, pinch it down, once again on the flat side, roll it seven or eight times. Take your mono, go back through the eye again. Get my fingers out of there. <laughs> Pull it tight. That's it, guys. That, that, that snells them on just like that. And that's all the rig we're using. It's not, not rocket science. Anybody can do it. And uh, we put them on the water with an eight ounce egg weight right behind the boat. We use a chum bag with an anchor on it. Um, I'll get into detail with the chum with you all here in a little while and show you what we're doing with the chum. But uh, this will go straight behind the chum bag on the ground, and 90% of the strikes come off the rod that's sitting behind the chum bag. And that's right. it, guys. Well, let's get this thing rigged up and get it out. All right. Fish on! <laughs> uh, let's clear a couple of these lines out the way, Inglis. This hit the flat line, didn't it? Yeah, it hit the flat line way out the back. Uh, he's running doesn't, towards doesn't other. It doesn't feel big, but you know what? You never know. You never know. See, you get him up here. Uh, he's going to try to run into our other line, so we should have to be careful with him for a second. All right. Okay. Oh, Spanish. You saw him? Yeah. You're underneath that? He's, or he's over it? You're under it. He's under it. Look like another nice Spanish. No, oh, he's coming back to the left. Okay. I'm coming around you. All right, there we go. There All go. right. Look like a Spanish. Yeah, I think it looked real shiny. Yeah, I think it's another Spanish. I think he's a little Good bigger. Deal. A little bigger than the other ones. Oh, there he goes. Oh. Yep. All right. That's a good thing about fishing down here. Quite a few opportunities. Yeah. Even if yeah. the cobia aren't cooperating. Yeah, we'll be happy to catch Spanish all day. He's right in that current. Come on. Decent sized fish. There he is. There's a tail. It might not be a Spanish. Uh, I think it is. Huh? I saw him before. I think it's a Spanish. Oh, really? I think he's just a little foul hooked. I think he's just a little foul hooked. He's just pulling yeah. hard. Yeah, he is foul hooked. Yep. Yep, he's just foul hooked. Not as big as the first one, but still. Uh, he's still good. Yeah. He's still good. A lot better than those 12 He'll inches eat. you catch on the beach. He'll eat good. He'll eat good. Oh, if I can get him in the net, he will. <laughs> no. Oh, I thought he came off. Made a little run. What's that? What's, what's the knot you got tied with your That's leader? Albright knot. And you put that just on your live bait one? Yeah, I'm on my on the flat line. line. On yeah. the flat line, I tie an Albright knot right there. I try not to. Yeah. There you go. Here we go. There we go. Another nice Spanish mackerel. Yeah, man. Pretty fish. Good table buddy. fare. Pretty fish. Let me, uh, let you get, get him over here where we can see him on camera. Real pretty fish. Real pretty fish. And again, they're up here, you know, we're 12 miles from the ocean and they're all the way up in here, but with, with there being no fresh water in here, I'm sure it's just like the ocean to them. Yep. You yeah, know, this nothing. is where the bait's at and they're following the food for sure. These Speaking guys, of, these guys got some teeth, so we're going to get, get some pliers, get him out of the net. Yeah. Speaking of food, I'll tell you what. Chef John's got a great recipe to share with you guys today. Let's go to the Dead Dog and see what he's got cooking. Hey guys, I'm back here at the kitchen of Dead Dog Saloon with my good friend, Chef John. Today's cooking at the dog. We are going to do something great. I think it's a scallop recipe. Got a little scallop dish going here, Inglis. Again, this is another one of our new items on the new menu here at Dead Dog. It's, uh, it's a unique kind of southwestern scallop dish. Uh, chorizo and scallops over papadel pasta in a cream sauce. So 
We're gonna walk you through the steps here today, but the first things first, we got our fresh scallops right here. And as always, we gotta season our fish good. This is just basic salt and pepper mixture here that we use at Dead Dog to save an extra step. And we got a hot grill going on back right here behind me. This is just some uh, olive oil. You want to make sure we got a real hot grill. You hear that sizzle there, because what you're looking for in the scallops, guys, is a nice hard sear, golden brown color. I know we talk about that a lot on this show, but it is really important. Oh yeah, you're not going to want to touch those very much. You want to leave them alone, let them set there and get that crusty brown color on the bottom. That's where all the flavor is, guys. As for our sauce, uh, what we want to do is get started. We got our saute pan, a little bit of oil. We got some minced garlic right here. Alright, we get that sauteing. Once your pan is pretty hot, you can tell from the sizzling it is. Got a little bit of dry white wine we're gonna get in there. And that's called a white wine reduction sauce. This is a white wine reduction, yes sir. See, I'm actually paying attention to you. I pay attention to you in these cooking segments. Well, it is a learning process, right? <laughs> <laughs> One day I'm actually going to be able to cook. All right, guys, what we got here is some nice Spanish chorizo. It's a spice sausage. You can get this down at uh, farmer's markets down at Paulie's, but uh, check out your ethnic sections in the grocery store. You might be able to find it there as well. Simmer nice. All right, guys. Got that simmering, and what we're going to do is just take some heavy cream, pour it right in there, and let that reduce with the chorizo in there, so the chorizo imparts all that nice flavor into the cream sauce. Okay guys, so our sauce is reduced down now to a nice consistency. You see how that's about half as much liquid as we had before. We're going to season the sauce now. It's very important you don't season your sauce until the, 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 the uh, reduction is completed, because if you season it first, that sauce reduces down, you might concentrate the, the salt flavor too much. Next thing you know, you got a salty sauce, and that's no good. What we got here is some pappardelle pasta, pappardelle, however you want to say it. It's uh, also known as like a ribbon pasta. It's really cool stuff. It's kind of just like a thick banded uh, fettuccine alfredo um, oh, pasta, yeah. but uh, nice thick bands there. Real tasty, guys. Take a good look. Plating. Use a pasta bowl, um, really anything. And then if you remember, we got our scallops working right here behind us. This is the color you're looking for in your scallops, guys. Get those seared scallops on there. And to finish this dish off, like I said, it's a southwestern thing. We got some fresh cilantro, again, from our friends on the Inlet Culinary Gardens. It doesn't get any fresher than this. Nope. And there we go, guys. We got our chorizo and scallops. All right, John, I, I got I to gotta give this a try. All right, you got it. English you tell everybody about how to get in touch with us. Absolutely, guys. Check us out on the website at deaddogsaloon.com.